actually gives you a baseline. Research from the University of Canterbury suggests that positive images of the Christchurch rebuild are a time travel daydream machine and more distracting than useful. The team crowdsourced images via their Facebook page, Symbols of Recovery, calling for the public to send them photos of what they found positive and negative about the Christchurch rebuild. Psychologist Professor Deke Helton and others have been examining the effects of the Christchurch recovery on people and have been surprised with the results. If all of a sudden I showed you a picture of a snarling dog, your eyes would kind of go to it, um, and that draws you away from the task. But we didn't know exactly what these images would do because they're, they're positive and negative, but in a more subtle way, like a personally meaningful way, whereas or extremely arousing things are threatening to everybody. If I show you a snarling dog, it's arousing to anybody regardless of where they live kind of thing. Whereas the images from Christchurch are much more about you personally. He says that the positive images of the rebuild resulted in participants of the study becoming unresponsive to the set task. We took those images and used them in a real task to figure out which ones would be most distracting. So what we did is we had three groups of people do either positive images from the rebuild, negative images from the rebuild, or control stimuli, which were the pictures all cut up and looked like confetti. Um, and they did that while they were doing a task that required them to pay attention. And we found that the positive images were the ones that actually made them most disengaged from the task. The negative pictures of the rebuild were basically ignored by participants. Have we become desensitised to negative images of Christchurch? Most people, most of the time, unless it's an immediate threatening negative image, meaning it's like something that can get you, you just dismiss it. It's like you've seen it, you don't care about it. I mean, it maybe affects you in subtle ways, but it's like it doesn't really draw your attention that much. You just discount it and move on. Um, it's not immediately relevant to you, I guess, is the way to put it. Nicola Hancock, who arranged the study as part of her master's degree, says it was important to have the study very Christchurch based, with all participants being from the city. Something like 90% of them had actually been here for the earthquake, so the images had to be personally um, meaningful to the population. So rather than just using images that, as Deke was talking about, um, appeal or don't appeal to everyone, they had personal meaning. So these little sticky things measure the oxygenation of the frontal cortex, letting them study the brain's activity. So instead of just asking people if they were engaged in the, um, in the task, you're actually measuring their brain activity so you can tell if they're engaged in the task. And in true Jared fashion, I decided I'd give it a go. Does it mean I'm going to like, oh my god, what's happening? <laughs> You're good. Am I, Again. am I about to have a heart attack? No, no, no. <laughs> no, it didn't mean that I was going to have a heart attack, just that I hadn't placed it on my head properly. The team hopes the results will aid in future marketing strategies for Christchurch and are looking to do more studies in the future. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. And is that normal?